So close your eyes and imagine. Imagine that you're standing on the shores of a lake, a flat, calm, placid lake. The region around has many other lakes, with some with flumina or rivers flowing into them. Now remove all the vegetation from around. The temperatures are lowering, still lower, bone chilling cold. You feel your weight is less. So you open your eyes and you look above. The sky looks orangish, looks hazy. Like the skies look after a forest fire in the Palouse region. Sun looks like a speck of dot or a speck of light up in the sky. And before you can think of anything else, it starts to rain. Very slowly, big drops of rain fall really slowly. If you can imagine that, welcome to Titan. Saturn's largest moon and the only moon in our solar system to have a thick, dense atmosphere. In fact, the atmosphere is 1.5 times thicker than that of Earth's and is composed mostly of nitrogen, like is in the air that we are breathing here, and methane. The methane that we use in our cooking stoves and is also in cow farts. But there is no oxygen. So even though it stinks like cow farts, there are no cows alive there. If this is Titan and this is the atmosphere, it's extended. And the upper regions of the atmosphere interact with sun rays, the methane breaks and rains onto the surface of Titan. So the whole surface is practically covered in organic gunk. What else rains on Titan? Methane in its liquid form. Yes, the gasoline you use in your car rains on Titan's surface. The surface temperature and pressure conditions of Titan are such that methane plays the same role as water plays on Earth. So met liquid methane rains from, rains from the sky, accumulates into puddles, lakes, and seas, flows into rivers only to evaporate back into the atm atmosphere and form methane clouds. So not only does Titan have a thick and dense atmosphere, it is the only planetary object we know which has stable surface liquids made of methane. Take a moment and think. A planetary object that is 10 times further away from sun than Earth is. A planetary object that receives 1% of the sunlight that Earth receives. A planetary object that you will expect to be anything but Earth is surprisingly similar to Earth. It's convincingly Earth-like, except that it's smaller than Earth. It's very similar to our moon. It's larger than our Earth's moon. So for a long time, we knew Titan as this bland orange ball. It was shrouded in mystery just because there is a thick atmosphere. We did not know what the surface looked like. How did we look through the atmosphere on the surface? The hint is infrared. So on Earth, firefighters use infrared goggles to look through haze on the surface of Earth. And that is what NASA did. It sent a mission to Titan, which was called Cassini, which carried with it which carried with itself its infrared goggles. That's a simpler way to say it carried a suite of instruments, and one of them was an infrared instrument, which we name as WIMS. So WIMS helped us look through this dense atmosphere onto the surface. How? 
So again, this is my Titan, and this is my atmosphere. If I look through it, I just see the atmosphere, bland orange ball. But there are something called in atmospheric windows, where you, if you look through these atmospheric windows, you start seeing the surface. And you saw these varied processes happening on this alien body. Not only that, Cassini carried with itself a probe called Huygens probe. It went through the atmosphere, take all that data, and then landed on the surface of Titan. It saw rocks which were smoothened out. There was no gem tumbler on Titan, but there was something that was working to smoothen out these rocks. On Earth, we see smooth rocks usually on in the riverbeds. So when a rock with a jagged end is entrained in river and tumbles, rocks and rolls, the sharper ends become smooth. The fact that we saw something similar on Titan's surface meant that surface fluids had flown on the surface very recently. What feeds the surface liquids? On Earth, surface liquids are fed by rain, and if you remember the imagination scenario, that is what is happening. But how do we see rain on a planetary body that is 1.4 billion kilometers away from us? And I'll talk more about it. But before that, I need to tell you that when Cassini was still orbiting the Saturnian system, those were the best days. We would be extremely enthused about coming to lab and looking at images of Titan uh, from Cassini and what new face of Titan or process on Titan we would be seeing. So one such day was when this data came in 2016, and I was pumped up to come to the lab, and I see this image. And just to give you all a perspective, this is the northern hemisphere of Titan. We are looking at the North Pole of Titan. Why is North Pole important? Because unlike Earth, only 1% of Titan's surface has liquids. And all of that liquid is mostly on its North Pole. So I come to the lab, and I see this image. And this is the image. Uh, that Cassini took through its infrared goggles, so we are looking at the surface. And I'll walk you through this image. The dark green feature here, which is amoeba-like, is the biggest sea on the North Pole of Titan called Kraken Mar Mare, not the sea mon monster, even though it's named after the sea monster. The bluish features here are clouds. They are not on the surface, they are above the surface. The really bright red surface, God, so bright, is a mirror-like reflection. It's when a flat mirror, and I told you in the beginning in the imagination scenario that the lakes are flat. So if a flat surface and the sun shines on the surface, it reflects at an equal angle, and Cassini's coincidentally here, we see this, whoa, bright, bright reflection that we call specular reflection. But then there was something really amazing in this data. And that was this bright region. And I was like, what is that? We, I think we have not seen. So I analyzed the data more, and I see that this bright region is over solid surface. So a solid surface on Titan is reflecting really bright. Hmm. And then, I dug more data and wanted to look at that same region previously. That region was observed two years back in 2014, because we have sparse data on Titan. And we see that the region was not bright. And then coincidentally, we got the same region covered by Cassini two Titan days later, which is one Earth month later. And that bright region was not there. So a solid, surface is reflecting brightly is ephemeral, stops reflecting after a few days. What on earth does that? Rainfall. A solid concrete surface does not reflect brightly to you. A small drizzle makes this concrete 
smoother so that it starts reflecting brightly at right geometries. And then when the liquid layer evaporates back, the concrete resumes its usual brightness. And we call it wet sidewalk effect. But there are no sidewalks on Titan. We just name this process wet sidewalk effect. So that's how we found that it is raining or it has freshly rained on Titan from something very simple, wet sidewalk effect. I've told you a lot about what we know about Titan. There is a lot that we do not know. For example, how do the rainbows look on Titan? How does, the, how does a burbling brook of methane sound on Titan? Does it light, like do, does Titan have lightning? Why did we not observe them? What is the surface made of? There are many such open questions that we do not know about Titan. And that's why we need to go back. Apart from that, studying Titan not only helps us understand Titan, it also helps us understand our home planet, the Earth. There are many processes that we do not know. How did early Earth evolve to be present day Earth? We, don't, we do not know. Erosional processes and the movement of plates, tectonic movements, has erased all that information from us. Looking at Titan helps us understand the early Earth processes. Looking at Titan is like looking back in time and understanding our home planet, understanding the evolution of us. And that's why we need to go back to Titan. That's one reason. Apart from that, I told you that the whole surface is practic practically covered in organic gunk. This organic, these organics are prerequisites for life. Has the chemistry proceeded into biology on Titan? Is there extinct or extant life on Titan? Is Titan habitable? And to find all those answers, Applied Physics Laboratory is going to send a drone on the surface of Titan. Why a drone? Because mobility is the key to understand Titan. There are so many processes happening. This drone can land on a place, take data, and go and take more data from other, other spots. Perhaps, in future, this drone will go to Titan. Perhaps we will send human astronauts to Titan, or robotic astronauts to Titan. And we might find exquisite forms of life, life as we not know it. Perhaps we will even colonize Titan someday. And then we might know the pleasures of sailing on a methane river or See, looking up in the sky um, using our infrared goggles, seeing Saturn rise, the big planet Saturn rise, and its bright rings reflecting really brightly. And the light of sun dripping, dripping down the hazy atmosphere on this bone-chilling cold surface. And when that happens, do not forget to get a wingsuit for you, because with the dense atmosphere and low gravity, it's very easy to fly on Titan. <laughs> but for that to happen, we must keep exploring. Thank you. <laughs>